Alleluia! Christ is risen! The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection, through Jesus Christ your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the church in Rome. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, just so that, as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lived to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 114. Let us say it together in unison. Hallelujah! When Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob, from a people of strange speech, Judah became God's sanctuary, and Israel his dominion. The sea beheld it and fled. Jordan turned and went back. The mountains skipped like rams, and the little hills like young sheep. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled? And O Jordan, that you turned back? you mountains that you skipped like rams, you little hills like young sheep. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the hard rock into a pool of water and flintstone into a flowing spring. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. 
His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly, with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, what is there to say on this Sunday of resurrection that has not been said so many times before? Throughout this Paschal Mystery Feast, these three days of the Tritium, we have been reflecting on the mandate of Christ to love one another, on the death of Christ, the joining of him into our suffering, and now the resurrection of Christ, that which gives us the promise of new and renewed life. As Paul says, just as we have been as we have died in baptism, so the resurrection is also for us, for us to have new life. A new life, a renewed life, life that allows us to come together, as the, the gospel says, to greet one another and to hold one another is something we are longing for right now. This promise is true, and yet it's not quite here yet. This particular Easter is so different. I long to hold, to greet, to see all of you. And I'm sure you love, long to do the same with your loved ones and with this church. And let that longing speak to us of the longing of God for the renewal of all, for the coming together for the healing, for the reconciliation of all. This longing does not go away. This moment is temporary, we know. Temporary may mean much longer than we'd like, but it will pass the same way all plagues and hardships have passed. But that doesn't mean the work is over. The work continues. This work has been going on for over 2,000 years, far longer, I would say. It is that in Christ, we Christians see that tangible evidence of that story that says, out of death comes life. And so as we go through this season this year, seeing so much death of so much around us, literal physical death, death of hopes and dreams, death of systems, death of livelihoods, so much loss. Let us begin wondering, as we continue to mourn and help those in this work, let us begin wondering what new life looks like. And just as with Jesus, New life doesn't look the same. This is not a simple resuscitation and a return to the normal. It might even be an opportunity to come out of this with something better than what we had before. We're going through it anyway. We might as well try to see if something we can learn from this. We can learn to better care for those around us, 
to offer healing, to offer support, to come together as one and find ways to be community together. As we'll reflect on in the Mass that we're about to do, the Mass on the world that is done without bread and wine in solidarity with all those who are sharing without right now, but is done in that same spirit of Christ's calling to make us one. That we might all be one as Jesus and God are one. So go today. Go out as you can safely. Proclaim to those you meet the greetings of this day. Believer and unbeliever alike, the greetings of renewal, of hope, that we will be able to come through this, that there is a promise of new life to come, that there is still hope even while we remain in the midst of this. Amen. Through the Paschal Mystery, your friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism unto his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? Will you continue in the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil and, whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ has burst through the tomb of death, victorious over its power, revealing the triumph of light over every darkness. In thanksgiving, we offer our prayers, responding, Hear us, O risen Christ. In thanksgiving for the resurrection of Jesus, who empties our spiritual tombs and reveals the way to abundant life, let us pray. For the leaders of nations, they may, they may guide the world to a greater fulfillment of its quest for freedom, justice, and peace, let us pray. For the innocent in troubled places and wherever strife stifles harmony, that the actions of the global community may free all who are suffering or imprisoned unjustly, let us pray. For the Church, for the bishops throughout our Anglican Communion, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Mike, Bishop of our Diocese, John, our priest, 
and Al our deacon, and for each of us, that we may embrace the mystery of the Pasha and give witness to the living Christ in our midst. Let us pray. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed, for those who have left us an inheritance of God's blessings, and who now join in the chorus of angels and the saints in paradise, let us pray. In thanksgiving for all who are virtually gathered here today to share in this Mass, that we may each be changed by the message of new life and the food of eternal hope, growing richly and fully into the forgiving compassion of Jesus, let us pray. Christ, morning star, shine in us and through us as we continue our prayer. For the Lawrence Field Parish, Wheeling, on our diocesan cycle of prayer, and the Reverend Daniel Mafla Silva, Mission La Natividad de Jesus, in our companion diocese in Colombia, let us pray. For those on our prayer list, for Tom, Lynn, Colleen, Marion, Shirley, Marty, Mason, Jay, Jerry, Lauren, Odell, Irene, Rich, Kevin, Rayland, Mike, Alicia, Lee, Doug, Barbara, Greg, Fred, Guy, Wendy, Donna, Ronnie, Michael, and all others we name now silently or aloud. We pray for the renewal and healing of all creation. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Since once again, Lord, I have neither bread nor wine nor altar. I will raise myself up beyond these symbols, up to the pure majesty of the real itself. I, your priest, will make the whole world my altar, and on it will offer you all the labors and suffering of the world. Over there on the horizon, Over there, on the horizon, the sun has just touched with light the outermost fringe of the eastern sky. Once again, beneath this moving sheet of fire, the living surface of the earth awakes and once again begins its fearful travail. I will place on my paten, O Lord, the harvest to be won by this renewal of labor. Into my chalice, I will pour all the sap which is to be pressed out this day from the earth's fruits. My chalice and paten are the depths of a soul laid widely open to all the forces which in a moment will rise up from every corner of the earth and converge upon the spirit. Grant me the remembrance and the mystical presence of all those whom the light is now awakening to a new day. One by one, Lord, I see and love all those whom you have given me to sustain and charm my life. One by one, I also number those who make up that other beloved family which has gradually surrounded me, its unity fashioned out of the most disparate elements, with affinities of the heart, of scientific research, and of thought. And one by one, more vaguely, it is true, yet all-inclusively, I call before me the whole vast anonymous army of living humanity, those who surround me and support me even though I do not know them, those who come and those who go, above all those who in office, laboratory, and factory, through their vision of truth or despite their error, truly believe in the progress of earthly reality and who today will once again take up their impassioned pursuit of the light. This restless multitude, confused or orderly, the immensity of which terrifies us, this ocean of humanity whose slow, monotonous wave flows 
trouble the hearts of even those whose faith is most firm. It is to this deep that I, desus, that I thus desire all the fibers of my being should respond. All the things in the world to which this day will bring increase. All those that will diminish. All those too that will die. All of them, Lord. All of them I try to gather into my arms so as to hold them out to you in offering. This is the material of my sacrifice, the only material you desire. Once upon a time, men took into your temple the first fruits of their harvest, the flower of their flocks. But the offering you really want, the offering you mysteriously need each day to appease your hunger, to slake your thirst, is nothing less than the growth of the world born ever onward in the stream of universal becoming. Receive, O Lord, this all-embracing host which your whole creation, moved by your magnetism, offers you at this dawn of a new day. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. This bread, our toil, is of itself, I know, but an immense fragmentation. This wine, our pain, is no more, I know, than a draught that dissolves. Yet in the very depths of this formless mass you have implanted, and this I am sure of, for I sense it, a desire, irresistible, hallowing, that makes us cry out, believer and unbeliever alike, Lord, make us one. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Would we share bread with one another? Lord, make us one. 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 Make us one. Make us one. One, one. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us go forth always in that peace.
go in peace to love and serve the Lord.